Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. Do you realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world? Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. Okay, this is uh, VK7 OTC, the club station, the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV Experimenters Nights. Welcome, Hayden. Good evening. VK7 HH from DX Ham, uh, Ham Radio, uh, Ham Radio DX. <laughs> DX Ham Radio. DX Ham Radio DX. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Something like that. Um, a very successful channel, which we'll go into in a sec. I just want to do uh, acknowledgement of country. Uh, so, in uh, recognition of the deep history and culture of the island, uh, we would like to acknowledge and pay our respects to all Tasmanian Aboriginal uh, people, uh, the traditional owners upon, uh, of the land upon which we meet. So, um, now, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and why am I congratulating Hayden? Hayden went past... 20,000 subscribers on his Ham Radio DX channel. So, now when did that happen, Hayden? Uh, that was that was <clears throat> the weekend of the fox hunt that we had here. Oh, cool. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Up to 21,000. Ca catching up. <laughs> catching up. <laughs> yeah. So, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank Good you very stuff. much. Does, does that sort of, does the dynamic change when you you sort of get that many people or, you know, the things you've got to do or... <laughs> the or you, get, you get more whinging and complaints in the comments. Oh, um, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's a bit weird because it's 20,000 subscribers, but um, the actual, the viewership is a lot uh, different because okay. <clears throat> you can't really judge a channel by subscribers you judge a channel by how many people actually come back to watch your videos, okay. which um, can vary depending on the time of year, the month, all that sort of thing. So someone might subscribe and never watch a video again. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good. Um, never thought that anyone would would even watch any any of it because uh, I started off started off with the microwave stuff really, and that was just so that I could remember what I actually did. Okay. And okay. How, and <laughs> so that if anything broke, I could go back and watch my own video. I love, um, it. I love it. But yeah, it's uh, it's something different, and yeah, we're having some success, and we're uh, inspiring, promoting, and educating people. So fantastic. Yeah. And you got the Michael Owen Medal for it. Yes. Yes. Uh, I did receive that. You did. Uh, no, well, I received it, but I haven't received okay, it. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, they're probably engraving it. Yeah, uh, I believe they are. And actually, <clears> there's, there's a bit of a bit of um, a, a side story to that. I had a meeting last night that I uh, Zoom meeting, which included Jenny Owen. Oh, yeah. Now Jenny is Michael's daughter, who is now an advanced licensee and has the call sign 
three ki. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so congratulations to Jenny. Yeah. So uh, that was it's fantastic. That's we good. Were, yeah. We were getting the the WIA Foundation up and going. So so yes. We'll have and to see if she wants to come down for the conference and expo. That would be good. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. And um, uh, on a bit of a sad note, uh, she did say that on the twenty second of September, twenty. 22, which is 22922, um, is actually the 10 year anniversary of Michael's becoming Silent Key, which I thought. 10 years already. 10 years, where did that go? Yeah. Right. So, yes. So, uh, anyway. Um, mm. Now, the big, huge news on the weekend <laughs> <laughs> the IC905 was released at the Tokyo, uh, Tokyo <laughs> Ham Fest. Yeah. Have you have you ever seen the Tokyo Ham Fair? What they do there? Yes. They t- they dress up in suits and ties, and they have this big parade and everything, and like a <laughs> like full dress rehearsal thing. It's like it's not like a ham fest where they just open the doors no. and everyone flood in. It's like you know, it's, it's very Japanese. <clears throat> and, yeah, and if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have a look at the videos inside, they've got all of the stalls set up on like these picnic tables, and there's no one there to actually show you through it or to demonstrate. It's actually just come along and you just look and, and everything's like written down and explanatory. It's all very prim and proper. Oh, and yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It'd be quite amazing to actually go and experience that. Yeah. I I know about the Tokyo Ham Fair because um, David Giles, who is 5DG, VK5DG, who is my best man, uh, actually went to the Tokyo Ham Fest one year uh, just before COVID. Oh. And told me all about it, and he just said, "It's just not like any other ham no. to go to." <laughs> no. just, so, so yeah, he he he's a big fan of Japan, and uh, I'm I'm green with envy because he has been on so many Shinkansens, which is the bullet train, <laughs> uh, which is one of my bucket list trains. Um, I've been on TGV, <laughs> but uh, got to get it on a bullet train. But when anyway. are you going to Japan to do it? Oh, I have to go Tokyo Ham Fair 2023. <laughs> Hopefully they'll do a direct flight out of Hobart or something by uh, then, or yeah. 2024 maybe. Yeah, right. <laughs> Upgrade the runway. <laughs> we are an international airport now. Yeah, well, we, that's we, what I mean. We fly to Auckland. I kind of feel, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the next destination is, but it probably won't be Japan. But You never know. You never know. Now, I see 905. Um, <clears throat> very impressive piece of kit. Yeah, so um, that started off as the what they called the SHF project. So it was uh, debuted at Dayton uh, Hamvention back in May and it was initially shown as a, a basically a prototype or concept which was only had 2.4 and 5.8 gigs in it. <clears throat> and um, basically it's a IC705 lookalike with a um, LAN cable between... Uh, sorry, IC705 lookalike controller yep. and then there's a LAN cable which runs to a... T- uh, to a RF unit um, up the up the pole, and that has all the RF circuitry in it. And then basically the idea is that eliminates the feed line loss, um, and then you just connect straight into your antenna. So fast forward to what are we now? August. So <clears throat> only a couple of months later, really three months. Correct. And they added 144, 430, 1296, uh, and 10 gigs. So they added five extra bands compared to what they had before. Correct. Um, huge amount of development <laughs> yeah uh, like I I'm assuming that they used the feedback that they received from the initial prototype which was a very smart idea right um, and they've come up now with the with the 905 which is kind of a oh, a turnkey solution for getting on the microwave bands yep <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, some caveats some really really good things that they're doing with it um, but yeah it, it looks to be a pretty look at good looking Unit. And not only the 905, they they had the the 2.4 and the 5.7 gig antennas and the 10 gig dish. Yep. <laughs> well, the dish was an interesting one because they didn't announce that as a product on the official um, promotional video. Oh, okay. They had the 10 gig antenna there, and if like I don't know where they got it from, it it didn't have a model number on it. But if they can construct 10 gig antennas, it would be very hey. handy for. Well, true. A lot of ten gig enthusiasts, um, but and it was about a <clears throat> three hundred mil dish, I think. Yeah, it, sort looked, of. it looked pretty big. Yeah, mm. um, 
but they had that all set up on the on the stall there. Icom also had the PW2, which is the successor from the PW1, the, yep. the, the amplifier. Linear, yep. Yep, um, so that's that was released at Dayton, and that really that hasn't really changed that much. So okay. I think they maybe tweaked a couple of things with that, but... That's HF 6 metres? I believe so, yep. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I think that'll do... I'm not sure if... I think it'll do a one one and a half kilowatts, I think. Okay. Maybe two kilowatts, I don't know. Okay. Um, but the, yeah, the, the American market then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the nine hundred five was the um, was the thing that interests uh, interested us yeah. here at Reist. Well and truly. And um, yeah, it's. Um, and we're hanging out for the price. We are hanging out for the price. Um, we're also hanging out on hopefully getting one for our expo in November. Excellent <laughs> so segue. Excellent, excellent. We're segue. working. <laughs> we're working on that. Um, <laughs> It was it was brought to my attention that we should probably get two so that we can demonstrate it properly. So maybe I need to go back to the icon people and ask them for two, which <laughs> might be stretching friendship, but we'll see how we go. Okay. <laughs> it's I mean it's a valid excuse. It's a valid excuse. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably they'll probably come back and they'll say, What are you talking about? You got plenty of microwave stuff you can test with down <laughs> there. <laughs> Rex Rex's uh, test lab, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, we don't know specs like noise figure and all that sort of stuff. That's yep. um, going to be, I'm assuming, released at a later date. There's no word on when it's going to be available for purchase or yeah. anything like that. So um, the the other thing that was also at the Tokyo Ham Fair was the Yasu FT710 yes. AESS Advanced en- Enhanced Acoustic Speaker System, something like that. Okay. Um, now, so that was released too. And that's a direct up and direct down conversion SDR. Uh, that's correct. Mm. Up to I think it's I think it does to ten, but I don't think six is direct up okay. and down. I can't yeah. I can't remember. I yeah. Th- but yeah, you you are right. It's but not it's like a, it's a it's a change <laughs> in architecture. Yeah, for, for Yezu, that's the yeah. It's not a um. It's not a um. Uh, it's it's not it's not SDR up to a certain point and then and then super heterodyne from there. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, interesting, very interesting. Yep. Now that was an excellent segue into the Tassie Ham Radio Conference and Expo, ninth, uh, ninth, fifth and sixth of November, um, and uh, we're pretty much settled the presenting <coughs> the presentations. So uh, some great presentations, uh, youth engagement, remote station, electrical safety, uh, so worldwide flora and fauna, uh, interference ma- mitigation, portable EME, QRP, soda builds, uh, 122 gig uh, from, uh, from David Minchin. So that's excellent. And I believe that David and Ian are going to be doing some contacts while they're down here they, on 122 gigs. Ah, they're bringing their kit with them. And also, uh, do do we say that there might be a raffle prize in that? Order? Yeah, may as well. <laughs> so um, yeah, David's um, David's donated one of his prototype full prototype units, so transceiver, uh, which includes the dish at 120, 122, 134 um, gigahertz. So uh, <laughs> there you go, VK3 IK flights, accommodation, and conference booked. That's, Excellent. That's Chris, I think. Thank, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, thank you. So uh, good stuff. Um, We've got a bit of a uh, humorous look at G.A. Taylor, uh, a bit about DATV developments in VK and a bit of promotion around Alara. So, uh, yeah. Do you want to um, let us know vendors? Yes. Um, so we have uh, a lot of vendors who have shown interest and have said that they're coming. Um, we're still waiting on some to register. So the ones that we could say that are coming, though, cool. are the WIA, cool. uh, yes. ICOM, Australia are coming. Um, Mobile One is coming. QSL Comms are coming. Um, who else we got? All about DX. All about DX. Yes, uh, that's Kevin with the hex beam. Um, <clears throat> we're working on uh, some locals as well, like Active Electronics. They might be coming along too. Yep. Um, DX Systems as well. Um, I believe Rotarians uh, coming. On the yes, end. Diane with the Rotarians of Amateur Radio. Uh, Alara. Alara will be set up too. Um, oh, Hillville oh. Scouts uh, will have a table. <clears throat> we'll also have uh, who else we got here? Reist's going to have a table, yes. of course. Yes, We're yes. going to have 
I think the plan is that we might have some stuff like 23 centimeter antennas and a few bits and bobs for sale. Yep. Um, Richard, I believe, 7ZBX is going to bring his dish. Woohoo! Well, he doesn't know it, but he's going to bring it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've, um, we've got a few who are coming, so that should be good. Um, but, yeah, we'd like many, many more. And if you're interested in having a table or selling anything pre-loved, then... Um, please let us know. Go to the Reese website. If you um, if you don't have quite full have a full table, even if you've just got a few things to sell, let us know. And then yes. what we can do is we can combine people onto a table. Correct. So that will make things a little bit easier. But yeah, yeah, if you've got something, then let us let us know. Cool, cool, cool. And this all happens at the <laughs> Sir Stanley Burberry Theatre at UTAS uh, Sandy Bay campus. So fantastic facility. Um, oh, and I can we can say. We can say that there will be a major transceiver raffled. We can also say that there will be... Um, I'm sponsoring a Nano v as well. Uh, and I think you've got some stuff as well. There's a Power SWR motor uh, oh, kit, yep. kit in there. Yep. Um, and, yeah, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. And and the, the 122, 134 gig uh, transceiver. We've so, got to get the full... Uh, we'll get the full raffle list on the website soon because um, uh, that question was asked in the week. So Yep. yep. Um, and if you register, you automatically get one raffle ticket and then there is the option at the actual event to, to buy, more. purchase more when you see the fantastic uh, raffle prizes. And good evening to Chris, VK7CDW. So, uh, so yeah, um, and uh, registrations are flowing in, so uh, looking really, really good. I think the last, what did we have? The last check was around about 30... No, 41. 40, 41. 41. <laughs> oh, so we have, so, yeah, sorry, we have 41 registered, and then we've got another, um, we can tack on another 13 onto that for our volunteers as well. So what do we got? Fifty four. Most of those registered have been from um, the mainland too. Correct. So correct. Correct. If you're in and um, ZL, and ZL, yes, we got. Uh, we do have one ZL that we know of. If there's any more who would like to register, then do so. There's four. As soon as possible. Four ZLs. Four ZLs. Is there? So there's two ZL amateurs and oh. partners. Yes. Coming along. So. All oh, oh, right. Now partners to us. We're not officially doing a partners tour but we've got lots of ideas about what partners can do uh on the because of course saturday is huge in hobart um there's the uh hello to uh, anthony um there's the salamanca market Mm -hmm. uh there's mona uh and there's all sorts of other things uh that are open and available usually something happening down there on the waterfront isn't there there's uh, some sort of exhibition or show or something to look at like you, get to, you go have a look around Salamanca Market, take a trip up to Mona and then back and then have a look around the city and that's your day almost gone. Correct. So correct, correct. there's a fair bit to do. And uh, <coughs> like I visited, uh, Reuben and I visited the Festival of Bright Ideas on Saturday, so there's probably going to be something on yep. um, at the Big Shed. So so fantastic. Oh, but, on Friday night. Oh, Friday, Friday night. night. Yes. Friday night. So we're going to all be up here at the club on Friday night. Um, we did put 6pm, but we might maybe do it a little bit earlier. We'll see okay, what happens, but yeah, yeah um, sure. in the afternoon on Friday before the event. So everyone who travels down beforehand can rock up here, and we're going to have a barbecue and a chin wag, and just um, have a bit of a laugh beforehand. And s- again, on a similar vein to the um, partners tours, we're not um, doing any official gathering together on Saturday night. So the large one's going to be on Friday. And then Saturday, if you want to get a smaller group together and book a table at a um, at a restaurant, then by all means go and do that. Um, Be fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm on the way. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Yeah. All right. Um, now, um, we have had an interesting request uh, come into us from a fine arts. Uh, honours student who is doing a project around shearwaters um, for so mutton birds is what the common I suppose the common name is shearwaters do a huge journey and this is the uh, this is the map that uh, Abby uh, Calvert uh, sent us now these shearwaters uh, do something like in a year a 30,000 kilometer journey <laughs> Which is just outrageous. They go from basically from Anta- from Antarctica, 
uh, past Australia, up into uh, the Pacific, and all the way up into Japan, the Aleutian Islands, Alaska, Kamchatka Peninsula, uh, and up into the edge of, of Russia, um, and, and into the Arctic, uh, and then they turn around and come back and do it all again, <laughs> which is just uh, outrageous. So what um, what Abby's uh, wanting wanting us to do, and we'll get in contact uh, hopefully with the the amateur radio organisations in each of these areas. Um, we're wanting to set up a, a, a date and a time, uh, or a date and a, a range of frequencies where we can transmit an audio file um, and get uh, those amateur stations to actually receive what they're hearing uh, from that audio file and the audio file is recollections of of uh, shearwaters um, so it'll be interesting exercise um, involve um, amateurs from all over the globe um, up and down uh, basically a a longitude, <laughs> a longer longitude, um, lines uh, from what's that? One fifty to one eighty, I think, uh, from that that scale there. Uh, so it'll be a very interesting exercise, um, and uh, so uh, that's uh, that's something that um, um, that's something that we are looking at helping out with with uh, with Abby and her uh, her. Uh, Fine Arts Honours Project. Now, what I've got, and just let me do a little bit of a reset here. Um, we, oh, no, hang on. <laughs> let me go to that camera and do a little bit of a reset here. Um, now, I've been talking to, and probably people are going, oh, he's going to bang on about that power supply again. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you're probably right. Um, the Ryden uh, RD6018, now what that stands for is uh, 60 volt, 18 amp, uh, fully configurable power supply. And that's what we're looking at uh, on the screen. Um, it's... Uh, it is a fully configurable power supply. Uh, you can do over voltage, over current. It can be current, uh, constant voltage, constant current, uh, and a range of other functions. There's a battery function that I, I, I displayed a couple of weeks ago, uh, which I'll, I'll go into in a bit more detail. Now, in the research that I actually did, um, I very much found out uh, that there was a Russian... Uh, a Russian uh, programmer who came up with um, called Unisoft uh, who came up with an alternate firmware for the Ryden power supplies the series of Ryden power supplies which gave a whole lot of extra functionality uh, as well as fixing some functionality that didn't actually work properly uh, so he did uh, I suspect a little bit of reverse engineering uh, oh, hello to uh, Gary, VK7JGD, hello, good evening. Um, and so what I bravely did the other day was um, um, <laughs> reflash the power supply. <laughs> and I thought there, there was fortunately instructions, uh, instructions around, um, in, in fact, and what he's also come up with, what, uh, what somebody else has come up with, um, Scott Mitten um, and Doug G., um, has also come up with a much more comprehensive um, uh, manual for the power supply, um, which is a work in progress, but it's a whole lot better than the original manual, um, and it, it's based on the Unisoft, um, the Unisoft firmware. So what I will do, just let me, just let me reset. I just need to reset and plug in. The, 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 the manually plug in. So, now there is some uh, Ryden software uh, that is available. Um, available. Here we go. 
Now, there is some ride, uh, a ride and power supply software that's available uh, freely on the net. This is the Chinese version uh, that comes with the, with the actual power supply. Um, and uh, what you do, uh, you just need to, one of the things you do need to do, because I've, I've, I've done this a few times and been highly frustrated, is go into Device Manager uh, and make sure that you know which of the COM ports <laughs> which of the COM ports you're actually connecting the power supply to and I'll, I'll actually show you um, on here um, the device ah there we go yes uh, USB serial CH340 which is on COM7 um, so once you select COM7 which is up here uh, and you connect to the power supply the product model serial number and the firmware level version will come up here and <laughs> the little information panel says now is normal pattern <laughs> so so um th this software is actually available in four different languages um and so is the um so is the uh, the actual power supply is now available in four different languages um it gives you uh the output voltage and current graph which is What's actually happening at the time? If I put, if I connect this battery, uh, you'll notice that if I switch this on, which is this panel over here, the basis information, or what I think should be the basic information, if I switch the power supply on, um, you can see that the chart now, uh, if I clear the curve, here we go. Um, you'll see that uh, the green is the voltage, the blue is the current, um, and you can see we've got uh, about 4.3 volts, we've got about 0.29 amps, uh, which is uh, about 1.24 uh, watts, uh, and the system temperature, so that's inside the box, is that temperature, and there's also the temperature probe which you, you plug into the back of it, which has got the little thermocouple. Um, which in, for a battery charging function what you do is you tape it onto the battery um, that's one of the functions that now works <laughs> so you can actually set the voltage um, uh, and it will um, uh, you can actually set the temperature sorry and when it goes over a particular temperature it'll, it'll uh, shut down the power supply which is uh, which is one of the functions that didn't work before. So, <laughs> so um, just to show you, uh, this is what the front panel looks like, and uh, you can see what it's another one of the uh, the new firmware um, advantages is you'll notice that there is an extra digit that you can bring up on the power supply. Um, so you've got a an extra level of precision uh, that you can actually do for the lower um, the, this sort of low voltage um, this sort of low voltage reading. Um, the now just let me refer to my my um, more precision and more display options. Lots more display options for color and the way that you do it. You can see I've selected the seven segment display. Uh, um, option uh, which displays the numbers as seven segment uh, seven segment displays um, uh, better handling of leading zeros uh, it, w it, it would switch the zero on and off at really odd times you, you didn't really know what it was doing so it handles leading zeros a lot better um, and lots more display color arrangements that you can bring up um, fully functional battery charging facility and I'll show you that in a minute uh, that's actually available through uh, the advanced functions in the uh, the software. Um, you can also um, calibrate if you have a much more higher precision um, multimeter um, available to you. So, and I'm 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 calling out um, Alan VK7KAJ here, who's got some very a couple of very nice. Um, uh, I think three and a half and four digit um, and maybe four and a half digit um, agilient uh, power supplies, uh, multimeters, you can actually do a calibration um, uh, step on here and I'll, I'll, I'll show you 
uh, the, the, the ability to go into that. Uh, so you can actually calibrate, uh, so that, that, that extra precision actually uh, it means something. Um, there is also an output surge uh, problem uh, that was in the original power supply. Uh, there is a hardware fix for that, so there is a, a, a capacitor that you actually uh, take out of the, uh, out of the circuit. Um, I have done, uh, I have put a 0.47 microfarad uh, green cap, uh, six, uh, it's a 630 volt cap, but I, that was the only one I actually could find at the time. It doesn't need to be obviously 630 volt, but it does need to be above um, 70 volts uh, because you can actually output, and that is between the uh, the positive and the negative of the uh, the output. Um, there is space in the back of it where you can actually put that in, so I put that in. So, so. Um, one of the things that I was going to show here was the advanced battery, um, the advanced battery setting. Um, one of the things that you can actually do here is under advanced functions, if we select advanced functions, you'll see that it gives you the ability to set up battery cycles. So a discharge and a, uh, a, a charge type cycle that it goes through. This table here literally gives you the, the voltage and the current that it, it uh, ends up at, um, I assume as an average, um, uh, and it gives you, so each cycle it's, it's giving you the voltage it gets to then the, and the current that it used to get there, um, and number of cycles, the number of, uh, and then when, it's, when you want it to stop that cycling, um, it goes through and gives you there's a volt, what they call voltage scanning and current scanning. Uh, so what the start and the 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 stop voltages were, um, I, I assume as an average over those cycle times, as well as the current as well. So you can get a bit of a uh, a bit of a um, I suppose a profile of a, of the battery. Um, uh, so that's that's actually quite nice um, and you can set that all up basically plug the battery in get this to cycle and and then walk away and 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 leave the it to do its its cycling so that's that's not bad there is um, a couple of other things in here which is um, there is a logo. <laughs> you can change the, the startup logo on the screen um, make it a picture of your nephew or something I don't know whatever uh, <laughs> um, or, or, or a, you know, if you, I suppose, if you were selling them as a, you know, a club thing, you could put the club logo in there or whatever. Um, there's the firmware update, which you can do through the software, or you can do through the front panel, um, and that, that's that's really simple. It just comes up with what what looks like a command line screen, and it shows you what it's doing as it goes through. So there's obviously a little um, microcontroller with a little. Um, uh, iOS, it's sort of a, a monitor type program in there, um, and then there is the ability to do the RS four eight five multi. They call it multi correspond, which is basically you can control it through RS four four eight five um, and with standard RS four eight five type uh, commands. So um, that is the Ryden power supply, um, and. Um, yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> I, I think this might be the last one that we actually do with the Ryden power supply. So I can hear you all sigh. Um, <laughs> um, and it's a power supply. It's a, it's a power supply. Steve keeps saying it's just a bloody power supply. <laughs> but there's lots of stuff you can do with it. <laughs> but this is not just a power supply. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a power supply. That's it. Now. Just, just to reiterate, <laughs> just to reiterate, um, um, the Ryden power supply. Um, I, I think I, I outlined this before. Um, the, that particular um, power supply comes in. You, you, you have, you can't buy it as a complete unit. You've got to buy it as three components. It comes with the front panel, which is all of the smarts that you're looking at there. Um, it is a, it's, it's a switch mode power supply. Um, so 
you do get some transient noise uh, and there's a couple of videos on the on the net around the noise and being able to suppress it that's one of the reasons i put the 0.47 mic uh, capacitor in there there are 0.1 mic capacitors across those terminals um, but it needs a little bit more to get those those transient um, spikes down it is a switching power supply so what it does is take 60 volts and the, the switch mode power supply inside is 60 volts at 18 amps uh, and it then switch modes so it, it converts it down to whatever voltage and current you actually want and controls it via switch mode techniques so um, that's that's it, it is certainly not a linear power supply I haven't run, uh, I actually haven't run a radio on it yet. Um, so I, that's one of the things I, I do want to do and see whether there is any uh, appreciable noise. Um, I know there is appreciable noise on 630 meters and 160 meters. Uh, but can I just say on 630 meters and 160 meters, anything makes a noise. <laughs> Absolutely anything makes a noise from an RF perspective um, and you would be amazed at what you can hear down at those sort of frequencies but up in the HF frequencies I'm not seeing any of that noise at all so um, so the filtering that's in there is is certainly good enough for up in up in that sort of region so uh, so yeah so that's the the Ryden uh, the Ryden uh, RD6018 this is the 60 volt 18 amp it does come in I think 12 amp uh, 12 or 10 amp versions a 25 amp version um and a six amp version so um and all that means is the 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 i suspect uh the switch mode power supply behind it is only going to whatever that voltage is um and whatever the current is it's rated for so um uh, they they are slightly different firmwares because there's different you you've got to flash it with a particular the 6018 firmware or the 606 uh, 6006 firmware etc etc so their firmwares are a little bit different for each of the power supplies but the functionality on the front panel exactly the same so um, so yeah that's um the the riding riding power supply now to finish off rd logs you have until uh, Sunday night, the 28th of August. So you have until Sunday night uh, to upload your logs. And, and we need the logs. We're down. <laughs> We're down compared to last year. We're down. We're down. Down, down. Um, so. Not that we won't win. We will win. Yeah. That's just we. But we still want to look good. <laughs> we still want to look the best that we can look. So there you go. Let me just put in log checker in here, VK log checker, and we'll check out online what we what we're actually looking at. So, Tricky uh, put this up on Discord earlier. Ah yes, he did, didn't he? He did. He did. He did. So let a little summary. Let me just go to what's that's cam one. So that'll be that one there. Oh yes, all right. Okay. Maybe put it up on. Well, you you um you come in, Steve. Just you come in here because you've got it on your digital your steam powered digital device. <laughs> Hello, Steve. G'day, Justin. How are you going? <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be in here. <laughs> so, so what what are we looking at? What 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 are we? Uh... Uh, so Hayden posted on Discord earlier this afternoon that um, we are currently sitting at forty logs, and last year we were fifty-seven. Right. Now VK6, who is our next com our competitor, is currently sitting at forty-nine logs, and I think last year they were thirty-six or something. Mm. So they're up a lot and mm. we're down yeah. now. But Tricky's come up with another little patch here, and I'm not quite sure what the number is, but he's put a, um, I think, an adjusted score underneath, which puts us miles ahead of VK6. Is this um, last year's? Or oh, that must be last year. No, I reckon this is last year's. That probably was last year's. So we were 56 last year with a, um, a adjusted score of 12,727. And VK6 at 38 logs was 4,609. 
Now, with the top four people in VK7, we were already at that. <laughs> I think this is I think this is an adjusted score. Oh, okay. Based on the number of licensees in the state. Yeah, okay. I suspect that's what that is. Right. Uh, not the actual score of, of yeah, but, yeah, that's right. We've got potentially four of the top five stations in the Soho co- um, section in in Hobart. Correct. Potentially in the room at the moment. Correct. <laughs> potentially. Potentially. Um, yes. We. I, I know the VK5 PAS will score well. He did last year, mm-hmm. and with all indications, he will again this year. Yeah. But we've got at least four that is that we know have scored over a thousand points. Yeah. 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 So. so. Um, Good stuff. We'll see. Oh no, we'll we'll see. But we'll see. if you haven't put your log in, please, please, please put your log in before uh, Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Because we want the numbers to look really good. Correct. Like, Correct. Like Correct. we walked the floor last year, we want to do it again this year. <laughs> <laughs> see what comment four SN makes in the report. <laughs> um, we'll have the we'll have the VK seven rule come in. <laughs> My soapbox comment, because I didn't know what to put in the soapbox, I just said VK7 rocks, and that was it. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Good stuff. All right. Mm. Okay. So, to finish off, a bit of a reminder, um, RD logs, again, again, again. (laughs) RD logs, please put them in. Yep, yep. yep. Um, Now, our September presentation night, uh, which is uh, next week. It actually is, would be next week. Because um, next week's beginning it, of September. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. Because it's the twenty fourth, so the thirty first. So we've got one more DATV night, and then on the seventh of September, we actually have um, our presentation night will be streamed, and it will be an interview with Warren from Casey Station. Ah. So it is. We we we're calling it Casey Station Calling. Um, so, so you'll get a chance um, yes. if you come up or if you're on the on the chat on the stream of actually asking Warren uh, questions, and he'll be uh, answering them live. Oh, okay. So, Casey Station calling on the seventh of September. So that should be that should be excellent. And the last time I saw Warren, he had a beard that was out here. <laughs> if, if, if anybody's interested in working Warren from Casey Station. Have a listen on 20 metres around about 3 to 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. But that's his lunchtime. Okay. And if you're beaming, beam 185 degrees, I think. Okay. So it's, it's past south. Okay. Um, and, and I did manage to get him at that, that beam heading, uh, around about 185 degrees. Okay. Um, so that, that's why I figure it's the right direction for Casey. Okay. Um, and I could hear him, but I couldn't work him. But... Um, Around at three to three thirty, for maybe four o'clock time yep. in the afternoon, seven days a week potentially, uh, is the time to look for him. Okay. Now he um, won't necessarily be on a frequency. He'll be probably talking to somebody else. He, he pops in on other conversations, from what I can gather. Okay. So um, yeah, so if you want to find it and get him. Oh, I, and I want to get him in the log. And hmm. he, he's um, he's he he's actually, if all goes to plan, he won't be down there for that much longer. Um, because they uh, they come back in I think the end of October, early November, or something yeah. like that. Yep. Um, because that's then the summer crew comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but but he also made the comment. He said it may change, and I may stay there for summer. So maybe down oh, there okay. may not be. Oh. Um, so not sure. Depends on how much fun he's having, isn't it? Well, how much fun he's having and how homesick he is. So, you know, because it must be pretty hard being down there and actually, you know. Yeah, um, well, you can't go out from McDonald's at all, can you? Ah, uh, correct. <laughs> not that I really want to go out from McDonald's, but anyway, that's on story. <laughs> yes, you can't just go and do something else because you can't walk outside. You can't, <laughs> it's, you know. It must be difficult enough just getting an antenna to stay in the air. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's mm. what I learnt from Paul Daniels' talk. <laughs> yeah. He just got so fed up with having to repair the antenna all the time, it just yeah. Yeah. gets so. a bit relentless. So yeah. So anyway. Um, oh, and hello to hello to Ron. Now, Ron, uh, thank you for coming onto the stream. Um, I don't have a two meter radio in the in the the ATV studio rod at the moment, so I can't actually come back to you on two meters so i apologize for that um 
So, uh, so uh, hello, and, and thank you for, for coming up on the stream, and thank you to everyone who came up on the stream. Um, hope you uh, hope you got something out of it. Uh, now, for our video, uh, for our RF viewers, uh, we've got a few videos. One is the uh, IC905 video from Hayden. Also, uh, Hayden did a fantastic little promo on the Ham Radio Conference and Expo. Oh, yes! <laughs> we've, we've How did we miss that? <laughs> we've got to show you this. How could we miss that? Oh, my God. Um, just the backstory to this. Uh, on the 18th, I think, of this month, there was a audible meteor explode over in the sky over southern Queensland. So it was heard in southern Queensland and maybe in New South Wales, but it was certainly seen in a lot of places. And a person, and I don't know who the person was, I can't remember, happened to be taking a uh, timed exposure of the Milky Way in the right direction. Wow. And he caught it. I love it. And that is an extraordinarily rare thing to catch, sure. is a, a meteorite in as it's exploding. For, so, yeah, and the whole trail, like it's... it's the whole thing. It's, yeah. it's, the whole thing. just... And, and, and the green glow and the whole yeah, bit, it's just... Yeah. Right. It's, a, it's actually in a landscape picture, but someone's trimmed it down t to use on the page that it's on. Okay. But um, yeah, it's it was an amazing photo, and you know, content-wise, you say, okay, it's just another astro shot, and it wasn't particularly interesting. Uh, um, yeah. But <laughs> suddenly, this picture has become extraordinarily important. It captures what a meteor is, and that that green glow there would be no more than three seconds in time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. As it, as it burns across the sky, literally, um, just crazy. I love it. Yeah, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Beautiful. Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely beautiful. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for sharing that, Steve. So that's good. <laughs> that is excellent. And how could we forget that? Oh, come on. Um, uh, so, um, videos, um, bit of a promo on the, the conference, uh, bit of a promo on our uh, hidden transmitter hunt from from Hayden as well great video and then some vertassium I, I'm a vertassium fan so a few of vertassium in um, and some also some real engineering um, that's another channel that I, I uh, hang around on um, about uh, the problem with our next moon mission which is a fascinating problem uh, all to do with dust oh yes that was a big problem back in the 60s wasn't yeah, it yeah sticky yeah. very sticky and it got into everything uh so yeah um and then oh, 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 we finish off if we've got time um there's a wonderful real engineering video on um the new turbines that are on the uh the 787 787s or triple sevens anyway the new the new aircraft and they are they are very different the way they've been designed so uh fascinating little video improvement anyway. in efficiency oh yeah efficiency but also the way they start them is different uh the way that they uh the way that they actually feed fuel to them is different all sorts of stuff oh, okay. so it's it's quite a quite a um uh, quite a substantial change mm. so uh, mm. came across that video thought hmm i think there'll be other people who'll be interested in that so yeah Anyway, um, stick around. So, well and truly, for our, that's for our RF viewers. We won't, uh, we don't go out on uh, streaming with those uh, those videos. So, um, anyway, uh, that's our show for tonight. Thank you, Steve, uh, for an impromptu uh, um, impromptu visit. Uh, and we'll um, see you it's, on the thirty first. It's just a power supply. Remember, that. It's <laughs> no, just it's a power not. supply. No, it's not. No, it is not. It's a special power supply. Special, it's special, just, it's special. It's just a power supply. No, it's a special power supply. <laughs> it's, <laughs> all right, on that note, <laughs> it's a power supply. It's a fantastic power supply. Anyway, 73, we'll catch you next week. Uh, this is VK7 uh, OTC, uh, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experiment tonight. Cheers. <laughs>